Hey, hi, hello and welcome to yet another video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to build a YouTube video summarizer with OpenAI's GPT API and also SwiftUI. It's super simple to create something like this. I'm gonna walk you through how we're going to build it. Let's jump straight into Xcode and create a new project. So I'm in Xcode now and I'm just going to create a YouTube summarizer. Now, if you do see anything unusual when it comes to Xcode, I am recording with Xcode 15. So it's, this is the Xcode 15 beta two. Uh, for example, you'll see things like preview, but pretty much everything else works standard. And just to make sure I'm going to head over to this, make sure I've selected iOS 16 as the minimum deployment target, and let's work from there. Now, the way we're gonna do this is pretty simple. We're gonna start off by taking in a YouTube URL. From the YouTube URL, we have a video ID. We're going to extract that video ID from the URL and then pass that to an API that I've written. Essentially, the reason for this API is we need a way to transcribe YouTube videos. One option is to use closed caption API that YouTube has provided, but the problem with that after I tested a bit is that API only lets you get the closed captions or the transcriptions for your own videos or videos that you have permissions to interact with. Not sure if there's any others, but I found an NPM library that lets you do this. Now it isn't an official way of doing so, so it can break at any point if YouTube changes the way they manage you know, their transcriptions or the way the URL works. But to bring that over to Swift in the simplest way possible, I wrapped it in an API, built an OJS application and ran it on a server, and now you have access to the API. We need to transcribe the video, and then with that transcription, we pass that over to OpenAI and ask it to summarize the video. It's as simple as that. We'll be using two Swift packages, a Lamifier to manage our network request and also an OpenAI kit library that I found online. Makes it a lot easier to work with OpenAI. So let's head over, add our Swift packages or add package dependency. I'm going to add a Lamifier. Now I've already got that here. Uh, keep note of this URL if you don't already have a Lamifier. And also OpenAI, this is the URL for that. It's from MacPaw and we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. This will be a Swift file and call this YouTube Summarizer View Model. And I'll make this class YouTube Summarizer View Model and make sure it's an observable object. And then I want to define an enum that covers the different states in our YouTube summarization process. So an enum, and I'll call this summary state. So we have at first it's idle, transcribing, and then summarize and done. I'll also have a case where it fails. We'll keep track of this with a published variable. And obviously we'll start off with idle. So let's go ahead and say func summarize video. And this is going to take in a URL. I'll also create another function that'll say transcribe video. This will take in a video ID of type string. And the last function here is going to be summarize transcription and this will take in transcript. So these two functions will be private and obviously we want to access the summarize video function and I'll have one more private function that'll be extract video ID from URL. And this is obviously going to return a string. For now, we'll just return an empty string. Now I've gone ahead and grabbed a sample video off of YouTube that I'll be using throughout this video. And I'm going to save it in the state here, which we'll be then using in a text field to manage the state and keep track of what the user wants to then view. So this state here just has a video URL. I realize I haven't bumped up the size. Now, if you take a look at the structure of this URL, it's youtube.com forward slash watch. And then you have this here. So yeah, essentially this is what you want, basically what comes after this. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to check the host first. And then we're going to make sure that the host is equal to youtube.com else. And I'm going to throw an error. Now to be able to throw my own error, I'm just going to create a quick enum, which is going to be summary error. And I'll just have one case runtime error, and it will just take in a string that we'll be able to print at any point. So if we do have this, I'm going to throw a summary error dot runtime error, and this will be wrong URL host. We do need to make sure that this conforms to error type. And then we're going to grab our query items, let query items equals URL components from, and we're going to pass in our URL dot absolute string and query items. And then also in this case, we're going to throw a summary error dot runtime error, no queries found. And finally, we're going to check for the V query. Let video ID equal query item dot first where, and we're gonna say name is equal to V. 
dot value. And in this case, if that fails, we're going to throw a summary error, runtime error, no video ID found. And then we'll return our video ID. And over here, we will say let video ID equals extract video ID from and pass in the URL. Let's print this first video ID. Now, of course, because this throws, we do want to say do catch and we want to try this. And here we'll print the error if this fails. Oh, my bad. I had the try at the beginning. Try is supposed to be here. And so to be able to test this out, I need an on appear. And here I'm going to say, I need to keep track of this actually. So I need observe object and we're going to say view model is equal to YouTube summarizer view model. And on appear, we're going to say view model dot summarize video and pass in a URL string video URL. And I'm going to force unwrap that obviously best practices guard let, but for the sake of this right now, print hello world and wrong URL host. Let me just print URL dot host. Uh, so because it's got the www dot, we had an issue with that. So instead, what I'm going to say is dot contains, and I will just grab this, pop that in there, and that should work now. Let's have a look. And there's our video ID. Beautiful. So now that we're able to extract the video ID, we're going to pass that into our API. So let's start off by importing a llama fire. And the URL that I have created looks like this. Let transcription URL is equal to, and it looks something like this. Now I will leave this in the description below for you to be able to copy and paste this a lot more easily. Uh, so that's the transcription URL. Now to be able to make this request, we're going to need to create the response data objects. Now what you actually get back when you send a request to this URL is a data object that has some data in it and then also the transcript. So let's go ahead and create those objects and I'll show you how to do that. So we have a struct and we're going to say transcript response and inside that it'll have a data object of type transcript text and we'll create the transcript text and we'll create the transcript text. Then inside this we have a transcript property of type string and make sure that both of these conform to the codable. There we go. Now over here, we can start calling our network request. So we're going to say let response equal af dot request. And we want one of these here. So we want a method parameters. So I'm going to pick this one here. I'm going to pass in my transcription URL. The method is post and my parameters are going to be a dictionary where I pass in video ID. And I'll of course pass in the video ID we get in our function. It's going to be a JSON encoder. Then now I do need to mention also for you to be able to run this, make sure you have async throws and it returns a string. Now async tells Swift that this is an asynchronous function and we want to await the response before we return back the value. And also we're going to make it a throwing function so that we can catch any errors and make sure that we handle them correctly. And of course we're returning back a transcript in the form of a string. Now we also need to make sure we have serializing decodable. And of course we're going to pass in the object that we had, which was transcript response.self. Then we can say transcript equals response dot value dot data dot transcript. And of course, because this is asynchronous, we make sure that we await. And because it throws, we're going to try it as well. And then we can return our transcript. So that should be all good. And then we come back to our summarize video function. Now, because we're going to be calling an asynchronous function, we need to run this inside of a task. So we're going to create the task here, pop our code inside the task and say, let transcript equal to try away transcribe video, pass in the video ID that we've extracted. And for now, we're just going to print the transcript. I'm going to build and run, build succeeds, and we'll see that we have, we have the transcript. So this printed out the transcript. And now all that's left is to be able to summarize this. Now you've probably seen me do something like this in a previous video where we sent something through to OpenAI and it's super simple. So let's go and import OpenAI and let's start filling out this function. The first thing we do wanna do is create our OpenAI instance. So we'll say private let OpenAI equal to OpenAI 
pass in the API token. And of course, I've moved that to the bottom of the file so it's not visible in the video, but a lot of people have asked me how you can use an OpenAI API key without it being compromised locally. One way that I have done that is by passing it through from a server. So sending it through to a server or making a request to get the API key and make it in the most subtle way possible. Obviously the best way is to not even have it on device at all and to pretty much run your own API. But of course, that's not the most feasible for everyone, especially if you are a purely Swift developer. Um, but do take a look into that. It's good practice. Now, the final thing is to summarize. First thing we want to do is create our chat query. So we're going to say let chat query equal to chat query. And the model, I'm going to use GPT 3.5 turbo. And the messages, I'm going to pass in message. Initial one will be like this. I'll pass in the role, which will be user, and the content will be summarize this video transcript, and then of course, pass in the transcript. Now I want to run this on stream. Now the way we're going to update our interface is by passing any updates that happen to the summary through the summary state. So if we go down to our summary state, in summarize, I'm going to add a string, and we're going to pass in any updated string through this summary state. So I'm going to create a do catch statement, and inside this, I'm gonna clear this out. I'm going to here, just print my error. Inside this, we're going to say for try await result in openai.chatstream passing in the chat query. And this is going to give us the stream of results. So every result that we get, we're going to then check if we are currently in the summarizing state. Now to get into that state, I'm going to first have to update with an empty string. So we'll say await main actor dot run, and we'll say state is equal to summarize and pass in an empty string. Then over here, we're going to check if we are in the summary state. So if case let dot summarizing, summarize content, equal to state. And if that is the case, we're going to then let new text equal to result dot choices dot first dot delta dot content. And we'll say state is equal to dot summarize content plus new text. Now, of course, because we do want this to be on the main thread, I need to add await main actor run and make sure that this is an asynchronous function and that it throws. But in this case, we don't want it to return anything because we're making the updates all over here. If we do have an error, we are going to then update the state to be failed. And I'll grab this. I'll also put it somewhere like this. And then over here, because we don't actually want to assign the summary to any particular variable, we're just going to be able to say await summarize transcription and pass it in the transcript. I need to make sure I say try await. If you do want to keep track of that, you can say print content plus new text just to make sure that the summary is running. So if you want to build and run and wait for that, there we go. So we can see a whole bunch of text being printed out. I'm just going to stop that. And let's go over to our content view. Now building this is gonna be super simple. I'm going to have a text field for me to add the URL for the video I want to summarize and then a place for me to display what the current state is. So essentially I'm going to have a VStack. In the VStack, I'm going to have an HStack and that'll have a text field. And this will bind to video URL and the title is going to be YouTube video URL. And on the side of that, I'll have a button. And the label for this is going to be summarize. And the button is going to basically perform this. And underneath that, I'll have a scroll view. Inside the scroll view, we'll say if case let dot summarize summary is equal to view model dot state then we'll have a text object that has the summary in it. Else, so I'm going to have text where I'll then have a switch of view model dot summary, so state, summary state, and I'll have text saying enter video URL. If it's transcribing, we'll say transcribing 
We don't need summary, well done. And we need one here that will tell us that it failed. Now I'll just leave that an empty string for the default. So then if I have this video here, I'll say summarize. And there's your summary. Now the reason we didn't see anything change was because we actually don't change the state here at any point. So let me change the state. If I grab this and when we go into our transcribe video, if I actually change this to say transcribe and then jump back to my content view and wait for the video to pop up, let the preview pop up. If I say summarize, now it's transcribing and boom, it's providing my summary now. And this is pretty much how you can build a YouTube video summarizer. It's super simple and honestly, it's super cool, works great. And if you put a nice UI on this, you can throw this on the App Store and who knows, you probably get a lot of people using it. Now, of course, if there is any content you want to see in particular, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace. I don't care about your stories. I